Hello, everyone, and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's Dokomomo Hawaii program. I am the host of today's program, today's episode of Dokomomo Hawaii. I am DeSoto Brown from Bishop Museum. I'm the Bishop Museum historian. And today we've got a guest with us, and we're going to be looking at Polynesian pop. So let's go to our, our friend who's joined us here. Michael, tell us your name and tell us what you do and why you're here. I am uh, Mike uh, Kaneshiro. Uh, I'm a in century modern enthusiast, mm -hmm. and I'm also uh, one of the directors for Dokomomo Hawaii. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm here to really just kind of talk about basically my, my passion and Correct. my interest in, in uh, mid century architecture, particularly in Hawaii. Yeah. And uh, I've been kind of uh, you know, following it since I was in college, and, and um, you know, always just, you know, makes me get excited about it, talking about it, and sharing it with, with people, and, and, and just, uh, it's just an amazing, you know, um, area of interest, yeah. you know. Now, yeah. you don't work in the architectural field. No, I don't. No. Yeah, as yeah. neither do I, so, yeah. but it's just something that we're both interested <laughs> Absolutely. in. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, one of the, the words that you used in, when I, you first let me know that we were going to be doing this program, is the word kitsch. And to me, that's a really loaded word. Um, I don't tend to use it very much because I think it's got so much baggage. Mm. What's your feeling about using that word for what we're going to be talking about? Right. I think a lot of times people associate kitsch with, uh, you know, being a sort of a lowbrow yeah. uh, sort of word. You know, like people just think about it as not classy exactly. or this uh, sort of uh, not I mean, it's popular, but it's you know not not what people want in their style or the kind of word they would use uh, every every day. But I think in terms of um, the creative aspect and the fun, you know, I, I look at it as a in a fun way. Uh, the, the 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 word kitsch is it's it's a lot of uh, it's it's kind of related to uh, a lot of times with. Uh, history and, and the culture that we, we grew up yeah. in, especially with Americana culture, where we have a lot of uh, you know um, uh, you know things that are inspired from the past and things that are really uh, kind of out of this world, like very different, very uh, not not your average kind of uh, you know um, uh, things you see every day, mm -hmm. and and it just sort of sparks this uh, you know imagination and this. Fantasy, right? You know. Well, to me, the reason I'm I'm sort of not not big on using the word is because it has such a to me it has a very judgmental aspect. So, in other words, there's high class, there's intellectual, there's good, there's sophisticated, and then there's kitsch, meaning it's inferior. Mm -hmm. um, the, what you just said is not necessarily that judgmental as much as it is uh, more for playful or right. intriguing or interesting. Yep. And, but I think there is also a very strong element in when we're talking about Polynesian pop or kitsch, the cultural appropriation of outsiders saying, hey, we're gonna just pull this, this, and this from these other cultures and throw them together and create a fantasy. Mm -hmm. And so on one hand, the type of thing that we're gonna talk about today can be seen as cultural appropriation and can be seen as an outsider misusing things. At the same time, the creation of a fantasy, particularly in an architectural sense or when creating a building, there are lots of fun aspects to that. And the whole tiki craze, tiki bars, the really atmospheric interiors that were created, which mm -hmm. is a mixture of sort of a space age popular culture with uh, very old things or cultural things, very Disneyland-like and Disneyland comes from that time period. So those two elements are, are, are there and they're mixed together. Anyway, let's get started with the first uh, building that we want to discuss, which is what's behind us right now. And yeah. now here it is. It's the Waikiki Inn Hotel. Uh, you'll tell us more about it, but I was just gonna say too that the picture here, which is the really iconic structure of the hotel, the hotel was basically, um, based on sort of the American motel layout of the pool and the two two-story buildings mm -hmm. facing onto the pool 
on this very skinny lot. But the lobby here is what we're talking about, and that was called a hyperbolic paraboloid. Yeah. And that I always, I always take time <laughs> to try to remember that term. Anyway, tell us about the Waikiki. Yeah. I mean, that term itself, it's, it's sort of a tongue twister, isn't it? Oh, it is. It is. <laughs> um, I mean, and it describes this three-dimensional form that uh, is, is warped in several different ways. Right. So anyway, you can see what it is. I don't have to explain it. Yeah, so this, this iconic building, I mean, it's, I, mean I wish they, they, they kept it, you know, for, for sort of a cultural preservation by itself because it, it just sort of represents... The time of Hawaii, oh, yeah. back in the days in the 50s, where it is definitely one of the golden eras of the pop culture, like America, Americana and Hawaiian pop culture, uh, you know, built by George Pete Wimberly, uh, 1953 and opened in 1956. I mean, this, this building is just kind of the epitome of what you, you, you thought about. It's the, you know, the tiki craze, um, but also in terms of escapism like you know Hawaii itself you're you're already in paradise and then again and you have this this beautiful building that kind of merges um modernism architecture mm -hmm. with um traditional architecture mm -hmm. together so it's definitely uh you know by itself you know um and that's you know very pioneer a pioneer in, in architecture uh, in the movement uh and i think in terms of the building um, it's been so kind of glorified in so many books. You know, the one particular book that I love, I, you know, is Swan Kristen's, uh, you know, Tiki Modern because mm -hmm. he he's got mm -hmm. a lot of these pictures mm -hmm. in there. But um, this this building has a lot of um, history behind it. And George Pete Wimberly, I mean, he, the architect himself, he's done amazing things in Hawaii, and uh, uh, this is one of his one of his iconic stuff. And yeah. uh, at during this time, I think uh, WATG, which is, mm -hmm. you know, they're the architect um, uh, agency, they're, they're actually doing a, a, a history behind it, like doing a, Good. a, a review of, of his work. Well, that's very, and as, as there should be. And I think something to point out here is that when this was constructed, it was completely by itself. There were no other big buildings around it. So it stood out a great deal more. However, it was really quite small. It looks much bigger and more impressive than it really was in person, and particularly in later years as other big buildings began to be built around it. So the way, it's, the way it looks in these early photographs is quite a bit different than the actual experience. Did you ever actually go inside it? Uh, you, mean, you mean the... The, 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 the hyperbolic yeah. paraboloid lobby? <laughs> In my dreams. <laughs> okay, because it actually was quite small. And mm. particularly in the two corners, which came down to touch the ground, which mm. in this picture come down is in the foreground, just in front of that 1955 yeah. Chevrolet, that reduced the amount of space inside because there was a very steeply sloping roof that came down to a very narrow little area that you couldn't really use. So, and having actually gone in it, I can tell you, particularly in the architectural photographs. Architectural photographs of themselves are a very different experience often than the real building is. Mm -hmm. So as impressive as this is, its utility was not as, uh, it was somewhat compromised inside because of the extreme shape that the roof occupied. Right? Which is not to say it's not a fabulous building, because it is. But the reality also needs to be sometimes, you know, buildings have to be used and lived in, so they can't just be fantasy creation. It's a bit more functional, as you said. Like, exactly. More practical. And, and the rest of the whole structure was. Now, also associated with this, which we don't have a photograph of right at the moment, was the restaurant at the other end of the property. So again, it was a very skinny property, two skinny buildings with the hotel rooms in it, uh, and, and a uh, garden in the center. And at the far end, on the ocean, was the swimming pool and the Tahitian Lanai restaurant. Tahitian Lanai restaurant, again, not as space agey as this, but Polynesian. Um, the food was not Polynesian mm -hmm. per se, but it was a very pleasant experience. Um, they had some separate sort of thatched pale on the property that had dining tables in them as well. Right. And as a little kid, I thought it would be cool to be able to eat outdoors in one of those. 
So the nights that we went, because I used to, this was one of the places I was taken as a little kid to eat dinner. And at that very early time, there was no Ely Kai Hotel on the right, and you parked on the unpaved property well. facing that. <laughs> Them were the days. Okay, let's go to the <laughs> next slide. And we're now going to look at another very typical, very similar type of structure or complex from the same time period as the Waikikian. That's the International Marketplace. That was a shopping center. It still is. There still is an international marketplace. But of course, the current iteration of it is extremely different and has very little connection to the architecture of this original, right. uh, this original place. And it also made great deal of use of this fantasy of Polynesia, the Pacific. The structures were open. There were trees, etc. Now it's your turn to tell us about the international marketplace. Yeah, so the international marketplace, I mean, it's basically a beloved landmark of Waikiki. Um, I mean, again, it's, it's again, another loss for yeah. uh, Hawaii itself, uh, another icon. Um, I mean, it's, it's got a lot of um, you know, accolades from around the world before. It's iconic in terms of where, you know, Don the Beachcomber started, mm -hmm. and he... He is definitely, uh, uh, you know, uh, a trendsetter in, in, in the world of, you know, uh, trying to, uh, you know, portray uh, escapism, Absolutely. exotica. Absolutely. Um, and, and also in terms of the, the, I think, people that associate with Don the Beachcomber, I mean, the, the celebrities, everybody, Absolutely. just made that place. So it's not just the, the place itself. It's the people Absolutely. that goes with it. And let's go to the next slide because the next picture is, that's the Don the Beachcomber's restaurant. Right. Uh, Don the Beachcomber originally built on this site in 1947. And then he partnered with uh, another person whose name you may remember, I can't think of right now, to actually develop the international marketplace. Mm -hmm. And he built, um, obviously, a space for his restaurant on the site. Yeah. And this is it facing onto Kalakaua Avenue, yeah. with this sculpture right in, the, in front and center, which is kind of an amalgamation of actual yeah. Pacific motifs but turned into something that would never have existed right. in real life. So uh, going back to what, who, uh, who have you've um, you talked about, Don Beachcomber, so he collaborated with, again, George Pete Wimberly. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Another Wimberly design um, using Polynesian-style longhouse. Yes. So this is an amazing like, feature. Uh, that I think um, Pete himself uh, tried to mm -hmm. play, mm -hmm. play around, mm -hmm. and he did an amazing like job with uh, how he wants to make it so true to its, you know, to its form mm -hmm. that it just, it just, and then it, an exaggeration of yes. things, you know, be beautiful um, edges yes. and lines, yes. make it very, very um, uh, fantasy-like, right. you know, right. So. Yeah, and, and Don the Beachcomber and Trader Vic's restaurants were the epitome of the creation of that fantasy escapism yeah. interior. Let's go to the next picture, which is also an element, very, very, uh, oh, this is from, this is from Kalakaua Avenue. So walking, this is, uh, this picture's from the 1960s. So walking along Kalakaua Avenue at that time, this is the view that you would have had, and you would have walked in in the center, just uh, to the left of this picture. But there were two matching longhouses, if you will. The one on the left was the Don the Beachcomber. The one on the right was just shops. And as you can see in this picture, the one on the right had this very elaborate uh, carved golden dragon for a jewelry store, which was called Peck. And that is also typical of this time period, the inclusion of Asian imagery as exotica along with Pacific or Polynesian. This is really... Again, what we're talking about is a yep. fantasy. Yep. And, and put it into context, I mean, I think what, what, uh, what we're trying, what I think during the time where people are trying to, to kind of uh, portray is not, mu not so much about trying to be true to itself, no. mm -mm. but actually trying to um, make something even more, um, you know, out of this world. Yes. It's just, it's just so people wouldn't think about putting no. dragons and... Right. Polynesian Except at this time together. period, it yeah. did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's go to the next picture because here's something else that was very much a part of that whole ambience. 
And this is the Banyan tree. The Banyan tree was already on the site. Mm -hmm. The Banyan tree is still standing today. That's one of the very few things that's left in the current version of this, of this structure. And it had a tree house in it. So there's a picture of the tree house. And right as you, again, walked in off the street, mm -hmm. this is what you saw. The tree house got used for a variety of things. It was used first as a private dining room for Don the Beachcombers. So you could book it for a couple to have a special romantic dinner. Then it got enlarged and it was turned into a radio station. So in mm. this picture, it's actually a radio studio with a DJ inside it, uh, live on the air. <laughs> I think it's an amazing um, feature of the place. I mean, and, and you think about it, because, you know, we've been to the original to the, yeah, 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 right. marketplace, and I think I was like, uh, probably, I came here as a soldier, so when I, when I got here, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Because it, it's like a heart, I mean, the, the, the whole building itself, I think it's central. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, yes. Uh, the roots are connecting to, towards this little, um, this little building, mm -hmm. you know, and you can see like the modern features, like you know, floor to ceiling um, windows. Mm -hmm. I mean, yes. that by itself is, yeah. is really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and also the, the current international marketplace has a little standalone version of this as an homage to uh, what used to be there. When the international marketplace first opened, it had the interior was all open. So buildings were on the edges looking into a central open space. By about 1970, all of that got filled in with a, additional structures, mm -hmm. and then even more were built at the back. And the problem with that was that they were no longer in keeping with the original feel or appearance of this, of this original architecture. And it was so crammed that you didn't necessarily even see where you were supposed to walk. Right. The other problem is, and this is true of both of what we've just looked at, Maintenance is key, and once something starts to get old-fashioned and it doesn't get maintained anymore, starts to go downhill, that's when people justify the demolition, right? And that's what happened here. Okay, let's go to our next slide, and Hamlet's Restaurant in Waikiki, tell us about it. Okay, well, one of my favorites. Uh, and by the way, did you ever see it in real life? I have not, so okay. I'm in a generation, I get, you yeah. know, this... Um, the millennial generation, we yeah. don't have a chance to see yeah, all this. Yeah, yeah. But, but when we get to see, like, you know, Wolf Fat, for example, which we're going to talk a little bit more. But for Canlis, I mean, I just heard beautiful, like, stories about it, mm -hmm. especially with friends from the California when they came to visit. And they remember this place because this is a sort of an upscale yeah. Kind very, of restaurant. It was very upscale. Um, you think about, like, Kali Kalani's Orchid. Oh, yeah, but, this is, right. But in a dramatic way. Very you know? much. Very dramatic, and, and it's got basically all the features you can think about if you want to be in a tropical yes. um, paradise, yes. like full of luxury, um, white, like, you wouldn't say white tablecloths, but they, they, it they was white tablecloths. Okay. It was, it they was, did. yeah. And, and, you know, servers, waiters, you know, they, they you basically have everything that you want in, yeah. in that. And the, 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 the architecture itself is, is beautiful. I mean, it's Polynesian inspired, and mm -hmm. you have all your tropical modernism elements like the lava rock walls yes. and, and a lot of woods. You mm -hmm. know, it's just an amazing space. Yeah, and when you walked in, there was a ceramic, a 50s style ceramic sort of abstract fountain wall with water dripping and orchid plants. And let's go to the next picture because that's yeah. the interior. And yeah. so there are your white tablecloths. Yeah. <laughs> this was a very high end restaurant. Yeah. And it, uh, already had a following by the time this was built. It was already established, but then this dramatic restaurant was uh, really the culmination of this entire mm -hmm. thing. You can see that, again, we've got a very high ceilinged longhouse style interior, totally easy breezy, as, my, as our friend Martin would say. Um, full uh, vertical louvers at the, at the end there for mm -hmm. trade winds to come yep. in and out. Um, very wonderful place and very special place, and I only went there a few times because it was very cute. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next picture. And this is a different, a t a different approach to exoticism. Uh, mm -hmm. This, of course, is a Chinese restaurant called Lao Yi Chai, uh, stood in Waikiki. Um, and it is a mixture of modern and 
the Asian elements. Yeah. Tell us. So the Dawi Chai is not what you call like your modernist buildings. I mean, it's it's more historically, um, culturally like iconic because it's one of those first buildings um, and, and interior where the Chinese restaurants. Um, you think about Chinese restaurants. I think this restaurant basically like de decorate this place to the top, mm -hmm. like to the brim, and and it was situated be between Kuhio and Kalakawa. Um, and uh, P. Y. Chong was the entrepreneur that that mm -hmm. uh, built the place, and he he's he wanted to kind of reflect a sort of a glamorous China, mm -hmm. uh, Hollywood style. Absolutely, and, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, and 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 he did an amazing. I mean, he really did it justice. I mean, uh, I've seen all these pictures. I mean, too, I wasn't there, but it's just beautiful. Like it's really intricate, ornate. Mm -hmm. um, oh yes. Um, you know details. And I will tell you, P.Y. Chong, going against his cliched characteristics of being a Chinese businessman, was not careful with his money, and in fact, he went bankrupt because he spent so much money on this, and because he spent so much more money on uh, promotion and, and mm -hmm. decor. Right. And it was to his discredit, unfortunately. It looks like he's very passionate about it. He was, that, but it, you but... Know, it kind of ruined him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Before we go on, and we've got one more building to talk about after this, um, we're going to talk about a little bit about Wolf Fat Restaurant, which is downtown, which is in a similar vein to this, a more modern building. It's not certainly a, not a traditional Chinese building, but it has elements that we see here: the upturned eaves, yep. the overtly Chinese decor on the outside. Wolf Fat has been empty for a long time. Uh, you were saying that there is the potential that it's going to be absolutely yes. We so, hope. We hope. So there's a, a, a um, we've we've heard the news that there is going to be a re rejuvenation of of wolf fat itself because uh, a lot of people has kind of fallen in love with yeah. the story behind Hawaii Five O and they wanted to see whether they can bring a little bit of Hawaii back in mm -hmm. history and I think wolf fat has that opportunity to do that. Um, they, uh, I think what it, right, what it is right now is, I think it's slated for renovation, um, and I think it's about to start really soon, the I end of the so. year, and uh, they're going to do um, sort of a, I think this is kind of like in the works, like a hotel, okay. a couple of rooms with hotels, a restaurant and a bar, so hope that they maintain the integrity of, of I the do place. too, and, and, and the building is right for it, and if it's done right, I have my fingers crossed that that will be a success. Absolutely, because yeah. the building is deserving of it. Yeah. Okay. Our last building that we're going to look at is actually not just one building. It is the Coco Palms Hotel. The Coco Palms, which we don't happen to have a photo of, had a very again dramatic lobby like what we saw in these other buildings. Very high peaked roof, the sort of longhouse ish uh, model, open but with space age modernist elements, this big dramatic chandelier, mm -hmm. et cetera. The, these, this picture here shows what were called the King's Cottages, which were the high-end freestanding bungalow rooms. The less expensive rooms were, again, in the typical two-story walk-up, um, old-fashioned kind of uh, just basic building. This building, unfortunately, this entire complex ravaged by Hurricane Iniki in 1992, uh, has been closed ever since. Many different attempts have been made to revive it. Um, we'll see what happens. But I know that the, um, the revival <laughs> itself, it, it just um, takes its toll because uh, there were a lot of interest in, in uh, pursuing uh, to buy the property, but it is an expensive property yeah. itself, and it comes with a lot of, uh, like you said, maintenance, um, or just trying to gut the place out and, and try to make the place like it is before. But this is a very his, another iconic place, yeah. right? This yeah. is where the dreams, where dreams are made of, the Absolutely. Hawaiian dreams. You know, yeah, um, people, when they think about Hawaii, they think about Coco Palms. Mm -hmm. I think this is a global icon. Um, other, you know, of all the other buildings we saw, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad that you ended up with Coco Palms because it's, this is well, and it also job. is, it's very famous for having been where Elvis, mm -hmm. uh, the finale of the Elvis film, Blue Hawaii, was filmed. Mm -hmm. And that's, people still know that. And it was an absolutely magnificent setting for that. But of course, again, it's all fantasy. 
Well, our last picture <laughs> is this one coming up next. And here really is the epitome of what we're talking about. Um, and one of the phrases that I read a long time ago was, Hawaii is paradise with American plumbing, meaning you don't have to rough it. You're going to live in luxury. And but there's still the exotic touches. Mm. So this is one of the bathrooms in the King's Cottages that we just saw. This use of the giant clamshell is totally iconic. Mm. The giant clamshell was sort of the accessory for that time period for Exotica. And the fact that this is being used for the utilitarian purpose of being a sink is kind of the ultimate of Kitch. either disrespect <laughs> or kitsch, whatever you want to say. But it also is indicative of the time period in that these are now endangered. You can't just yank them up out of the, out of the ocean floor yeah. and put them in your bathroom. Now. Of course, yeah. Of course and not. so this is something you could not use a real one. Of course, there could be imitation ones. Mm -hmm. And that's what we would probably do today if this was to occur. But this use of this natural, tremendously exotic, bizarre object to be part of your experience is very much what we're talking about. Right. And in this particular respect, you're never going to be able to replicate the bathroom that we see here because it's impossible to use the shells again, but also because, as you said, the Coco Palms property, unfortunately, is encumbered with a lot of baggage in terms of the zoning, in terms of uh, inundation zones for tsunamis and stuff and things like that, yeah. and flooding. Um, those are all considerations that make it difficult to, to bring this back. And there also is a lot of competition now. When this was the big hotel on Kauai, there wasn't a lot of competition. It was the only thing like it there. There are resorts now that outdo it. And it also doesn't have direct access to a beach because the highway is between the hotel and the beach. So the makes Coco it a rough spot. Yeah. yeah. Well, the, 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 the geography of the location. Right. Of so all of these factors suggest that a return to what we saw originally for the Cocoa Palms is not going to happen. At least not this time. Well, that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you for being with us. And thank you for being thank here. You for and we me. had some fun stuff to talk about. And again, to remind people, Cocomomo is uh, an organization to preserve and document the mid-century architecture. We, we have a local branch, and that's what we do here. Thank you. Okay, everybody, thanks for joining us. That's the end of Dokomomo Hawaii for this week, and we'll see you again on Think Tech in the near future. Till then, I'm DeSoto Brown saying aloha.